if you want to display the frequency or distribution of data within specific ranges, then creating a distribution chart in Excel is the best option for you. Hello everyone, this is Jihad Rianjim from Excel Demi and today we'll learn several methods on how to create a distribution chart in Excel. Let's talk about what is a distribution chart in Excel. A distribution chart represents the data in ranges or beams to interpret the data quickly. It offers a clear and concise representation of data distribution, making it easier to draw insights, identify trends, and areas that require attention. For this tutorial, we'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Without any further discussion, let's get started. In our first method, we'll be applying frequency function to make a distribution chart. Here, at first, we have the bean size in the G4 cell. So, we'll insert 10 as our bean size. You can easily change the bean size according to your liking. Looking at the data set, we can see the smallest age is 25. So, I'll start the age bracket from 20, which is less than the smallest age. So, let's go for the E7 cell and start the age bracket from 20. We'll go for the E7 cell and then add the bean size with it. Now, to make it permanent, we'll use F4 in the keyboard. Now, press the enter button and you've got your second age bracket. Let's use the fill handle to get all the age brackets in the column E. After that, we'll write down more to insert the overflow bin. To improve the bin labels and make them easier to understand, let's create the labels under the range column. At first, we'll be going for the F7 cell and write down less than equal 20. This cell will contain all the values that are less than or equal to 20 and in the next cell, we'll be going for the 21 to 30 range. And after that, we'll be moving to 31 to 40. And after that, we have 41 to 50. And move on to 51 to 60, 61 to 70. And let's move on to 71 to 80. And in the overflow bin, we'll go for greater than or equal 80. This cell will contain all the values that are greater than or equal to 80. To determine the number of member in the column G, we'll be using the frequency function. So let's go for the G7 cell and insert the frequency function. The frequency function calculates how often values occur within a range of values and then returns a vertical array of numbers having one more element than the bean arrays. So let's go for the two parameters, data array and beans array. As data array, we'll be selecting the C5 to C14 age group, and then we'll be moving to the beans array, which is in the E7 to E13 cell range. If we press the enter button, then we have got the number of member here. If you look closely, then you will see that the frequency function has returned one extra element than the beans array. The extra element is used to consider the overflow bin. Now, let's insert the distribution chart. Select the F6 to G14 cells, go for the insert tab and in the charts, you'll find insert column or bar chart, select 2D clustered column and you have inserted the clustered column here. If you double click on the columns, then it will open the format data series. Now, let's reduce the gap width. So, let's go for the gap width and make it zero. Press the enter button and you have got the chart according to your liking. Let's go for the fill and line to insert the border here. Suppose if you want to get the proper border, then choose the solid line and you can also choose the color according to your liking. In this case, I have selected the black color as my border and now press the enter button and let's move on to the chart. If you look closely, then the 41 to 50 range has the highest number of member, which is clearly shown on the distribution chart. So that's how we can easily create a distribution chart in Excel. In our second method, we'll be using data analysis tool pack to create a distribution chart. 
at first we have the age bracket column which starts from 20 as the smallest age in the column C is 25. After that, the beam levels have been set up to 80 like the previous method. Now, let's go for the file tab, choose options to open Excel options, click on add ins and here you will find the manage option, click on go to open the add ins dialog box. In the add ins dialog box, here you will tick on analysis tool pack, click OK. Now, if you click on the data tab, then you will find the data analysis here. Let's click on the data analysis to open the data analysis dialog box. Choose the histogram option. Click OK to open histogram dialog box. As input range, we'll choose the C5 to C14 data range. In the bean range, we'll choose E5 to E11 data range as we want our output in the G4 cell. So, we'll select the output range as G4. This time, as we are trying to insert the distribution chart, so we'll tick on the chart output. Click OK. And now, you have inserted your distribution chart here. You can easily adjust the chart to show it perfectly on the screen. You can also double click on the data chart to open the data series, then reduce the gap width to zero and again go for the fill and line like the previous method and insert the border. Choose solid line and choose the black color. And now you can see that you have inserted the distribution chart with the help of data analysis tool pack. Let's insert the distribution chart using pivot table here. At first, go for the insert tab. In the pivot table, we'll find from table or range option. Click on it to open pivot table from table or range dialog box. Here you will see that the pivot table or range has already been selected. Now, let's go for the new worksheet. Click OK to open the new worksheet here. Here you can choose the pivot table fields you want to show on the screen. Here we want to show the square feet and cells, so I'll choose both of them. Now, as we want our sum of square feet in the rows option, so we'll drag the sum of square feet from the values to the rows option. And now you have got your perfect pivot table here. If you want to insert the currency in the sum of cells, then choose the sum of cells, double click on it to open the value field settings. Click on the number format to open the format cells dialog box. Click on the currency and now choose how you want to show it on the screen. You can see the preview here. Click OK and again OK to insert the currency format here in the column B. Select any of the cell range, right click and choose group option to open the grouping dialog box. Here by default the starting position is the 950. And after that, we have by default the ending point of 5000 and by means how much range you want to show it on the screen. So, the bin range will be here 500. So, we'll select 500 as our difference in the by option. Click OK and you can see that you have created the row labels range of 500 bin size here. Now, let's select the data area and then go for the insert tab and here in the charts you'll again find the insert column or bar chart select 2d cluster column to insert the 2d cluster column here adjust the chart a bit and then double click on the column here and here you'll find the format data series like the previous method you'll make the gap width zero and now you'll go for the fill and line to insert the border here go for the border choose solid line and choose the color black here and that's how you have got the distribution chart by the help of pivot table here in excel this time we'll be using normal distribution function to insert a distribution chart at first we need to determine mean and standard deviation so, we'll go for the G4 cell to determine the mean and here we'll use the average function. The average function returns the average of its 
arguments which can be numbers or names here at first we need to choose the number range which is the c5 to c14 press the enter button and you have got the mean here a mean of 79.7 suggests on average the values in the data set are close to 79.7 after that we'll go for the g5 cell and here we'll insert the standard deviation function which calculates standard deviation based on the entire population given as argument in this section we'll again choose the parameter of the number in the c5 to c14 data range press the enter button and you have got the standard deviation in the g5 cell let's reduce the number of decimals by using the home tab a standard deviation of 9.79 indicates that the values in the data set vary by approximately 9.79 units from the mean. Let's go for the column D to determine the normal distribution. The normal distribution is a probability distribution that is symmetrical about the mean, showing that the data near the mean are more frequent in occurrence than the data far from the mean. Now let's go for the D5 cell and insert the norm dot distribution function which returns the normal distribution for the specified mean and standard deviation. Now at first we have four parameters. The first parameter is the X which is in the C5 cell value and after that we have the mean is in the G4 cell. Make it permanent by using F4 in the keyboard. After that, we have the standard deviation, which is in the G5 cell. Make it absolute by using F4 in the keyboard again. After that, we have two options in the cumulative parameter. If we want to use the cumulative distribution, then we should use true option. But for the probability density function, we can use the false option. As in this case, we are dealing with the probability function. So we'll go for the false option here. After that, we'll press the enter button to get the normal distribution here. Now use the fill handle tool to get the normal distribution for every cell of the column D. Now select the values of C4 to D14 data range and go for the insert tab. Here in the charts, you'll go for insert scatter or bubble chart. Choose the scatter with straight lines and here you have got the normal distribution. Now click on the horizontal axis and here you'll find the format axis dialog box here we'll go for the bounds and here we'll go for the minimum range of 60 to 100 so we'll change the minimum value from 0 to 60 press the enter button and now you can see that you have got the perfect normal distribution here if you look correctly then you can see that the highest peak of the normal distribution is close to the mean value of 79.7 so that's how we can easily use the normal distribution function to insert the distribution chart in excel so that's it for today you can follow these methods accordingly or you can download the practice workbook from the article link below hope this will help you if you have any questions suggestions or feedback please let us know in the comment section or you can have a glance at excelemy.com or join our thriving excelemy community forum where you can post your excel and vba challenges and get solutions from our experts and fellow users thanks for watching our video if you like this video please consider subscribing for more content like this